What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Rotary Craft. And today's episode is going to be the last episode in the series, as I'm sure you guys could already tell by the title of the video. So please go into the comments and either post a new comment or upvote an already existing one to let me know what mod you'd like to see next. And as I always say with these episodes, if you've never commented on my episodes before, and if you never plan to do it in the future, I'd still appreciate it if you could comment on this one. I like to get as much feedback as to what people would like to see for the next series as possible. So even if it's just saying, oh, I'd like to see this mod, and you never comment again, I'd still appreciate that. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to be doing the typical series wrap up where I kind of discuss the series as a whole how I enjoyed it and we'll do a little bit of a world tour or base tour whatever you want to call it so I have to say I really did enjoy the rotary craft series it was rotary craft reactor craft and electric craft but of course rotary craft was the main one now I know we didn't get through everything there are still some reactor craft parts that we didn't get to but I'd like to think we got through most of the practical stuff for single player I know we still have the huge uh, fusion reactor and I never really got to that but that is such an absurd reactor that you probably will never end up using it if you're playing the way that I did uh, and it would take forever to get resources for so there are already a lot of good videos out on stuff like that but we covered pretty much everything that we have in the rotary craft handbook uh, which I'm super happy with so um, yeah now we get to do the base tour so we can go outside first and do the actual you know looking at the base so I did work on the base a little bit because I tried to finish it off as much as I could before ending the series but I never actually finished the base which I find pretty funny considering I actually made the base around like between episodes 5 and 10 I think um, I used to live in just like a hole in the wall and then I finally moved just outside uh, we'll actually take a look at the hole in the wall I guess we can look at it now it's pretty much right behind where my base is we used to live right over there at those doors, right behind all the reeds. But uh, yeah, so we moved outside. I never actually finished this base completely, but I really do like the way it turned out. Uh, the only thing I would have done differently with this is it's made of a lot of wood. And a lot of the stuff that we worked with could light it on fire. So that is why most of the stuff is in the basement. And I didn't really feel the need to expand upon the base itself. Uh, so I guess we can start outside now. Uh, so... You can see the end portal is way over there. We didn't really do much with the end portal. I did go to the end just to get some blocks, but I never actually even killed the dragon. Um, but yeah, so this is the ethanol crystal producing setup. And I actually really love this setup because it's great. Um, you can see we've got a ton of sludge in here now. We do have to manually move the sludge down to a furnace. But the whole idea is that we have uh, a bud switch activated sugarcane farm, which automatically crafts the sugarcane into sugar. And then it comes into the fermenter setup, which... We'll use water in the fermenters and it pretty much makes the yeast and then the yeast goes down into the other fermenter which is used to make sludge and we get the saplings or we get the I want to say it's the what is it the sawdust from over here at the woodcutter setup which also has a fertilizer which is actually not working right now but this thing is amazing it's got infinity on it so it's going to replant the sapling every time so this is just a great all-around setup for using gasoline engines or performance engines um so yeah i love this setup that was a lot of fun to make so then on the other side of the house we have the solar mirrors and the solar tower setup now i never actually used this one either but the main idea of it was that i could put uh just pretty much ethanol into or ethanol crystals into the gasoline engine and it would multiply the power um pretty much because this pumps the water extremely fast over into the uh solar tower and then it works really well and puts out a ton more power down here now that i think about it i'm not even sure how fast the operation time is on this but we might have been able to get away with just a steam engine using the pump not really sure but yeah i really enjoyed making this setup too it's really awesome because this one can scale extremely well using the solar mirrors and solar tower uh once you start getting past the point that i'm at right here it starts being really expensive to scale it though so that's why i never really built it any bigger than this because you start needing you know like four of these solar towers stacked on top of each other but I also thought this was really cool. Uh, over here is a very, very old canola seed farm that I had, uh, which is great. It uses fans to blow the uh, three by however long the farm is area. It pretty much blows three blocks in front of this. So just the central block and then one to the left and one to the right. It'll blow those forward and then they collect in a water stream and get collected in a chest. And I actually never discussed what this was over here. I did this off camera as sort of a side project. And the main goal of it was to be a huge 
a layerable lubricant producing farm that connected or it connected to the farm i never got around to finishing it off though and i never actually did a video on this it was just kind of a side project which is really rare that i'll do in a surviving with series but it's pretty much the setups that we used before it's the grinder and then the centrifuge and then they collect and it just goes into the central lubricant hose thing um so yeah nothing special there but never really actually showed that on camera so i thought it'd be cool to show you guys now that's pretty much it for outside I guess you can consider this outside. We have the waterfall that goes down to the hydrokinetic engine down there. Again, I never really used that for anything, um, but as always with the Surviving With series, I tried to show everything in the mod uh, as best I could. So even if I didn't really plan on using it, I still built it for you guys. Then we have the crafting area over here. I was told early on that I should make like a crafting shrine sort of area because I start every episode out pretty much with this angle right here. And I do the you know what's going on guys we're back and then i go into the you know chest and what we're crafting today and then this stuff contains all my you know miscellaneous things in here that we have um but yeah so that's the crafting area over there over here is my extractor setup now this really hasn't changed that much outside of the most recent electrocraft episode where we actually used the induction motor to power this but for the most part this has been the same i want to say i powered it with a performance engine and then switched the gearbox between torque and speed between the different operations on this but this is extremely useful it averages about one ore turning into five ingots which is amazing uh it helped out so much when i was actually trying to uh, build stuff that used a ton of steel because all you have to do is gather like one stack of iron and you're good to go and of course our you know sonic borer and boring machine helped out a ton with that but that's pretty much this setup over there uh we have the pump dc electric engine shaft junction all over the place so i'm not really going to cover that but then we have the induction motor and the cvt unit which is just the adjustable uh gearbox that can go up to 32 requires lubricant but doesn't actually consume it and then over here we have the filling station which i only ever used once for the jetpack but you know you just take the jetpack off you throw it in here where do we even throw it in there we throw it in there and it refills it might as well let it refill a little bit now because we're not going to be using this ethanol again super easy though it just uses a dc electric engine to power it and you can throw the ethanol crystals in there oh, give me that back that's the way you do fill up the jetpack though and now i guess we can look upstairs really quick another thing that i never showed on camera was the force field uh you do have a lot of weapons offered to you in the rotary craft handbook you can look at it uh, there is a huge section on weapons uh, some of them are defensive some of them are offensive uh, you got some cool guns lasers all that stuff i did use the force field just to protect around the base um, it pretty much just gets powered and you can set the radius and then it prevents mobs from getting in um, they can leave but then they can't come back in so i thought that was pretty cool and the reason the roof up there is open is one because i really wasn't feeling like closing it off and two because you do need at least a single block up from this being open so it can you know see however far the radius is going to be um over here we have the enchanting setup which for the most part on camera was not very kind to me as you guys can hopefully remember we did get some bane of arthropods some very low sharpness a I want to say like a power one uh, for a bow, but it did end up getting me the infinity book in the end that we used on the woodcutter, so I can't complain. Uh, nothing else really up here. I did finally replace these stairs. These used to be regular wood blocks. I didn't use them that much, but apparently when I did, it really ticked people off, so I finally switched them. And now I guess we get to go downstairs where all the fun stuff happens. So there's a lot of stuff to cover down here. This is the first grinder setup that I ever had. This is the same one as the you know setup I had outside for lubricant. We get the centrifuge down there, grinder up here using a worm gear. I don't even know why I'm using that now that I can make diamond gear boxes because this is going really slow with that. But the worm gear is what I started out with initially because it allows you to not have to worry about putting lubricant into it, stuff like that. Again, same pump setup. I have a blast furnace over here. This is just the one that I would use for making steel. Um, I do have other setups that I would, you know, occasionally pull out if we needed to heat it up any hotter than that, but this was the main setup. Um, yeah, then over here we have the frictional heater heating the furnace. It's got a clutch on it, and I want to say there's a comparator back there somewhere that lets us know if the furnace has anything in it, so it's not actually running if the furnace isn't on. And then we just have the hopper and chest for it to gather stuff. We got a lot of ethanol crystals in there. Nothing special, though. Over here, we have the fractionation unit, which is powered by a 16 to one gearbox and gasoline engine. And this is what we used to make all of the jet fuel. I used this a ton because I used a lot of micro turbines. Um, but yeah, this was, this was like my best friend. It was kind of annoying to gather all this stuff in here. The magma cream is what I'm out of right now, but 
yeah, super useful. The hydrokinetic engines right here, we kind of already covered this. Uh, you just would be able to pull the power out right here, but I never used it for anything, so it just kind of sat there. Uh, we have another grinder at, uh, over here with another worm gear, which is pretty much just using, uh, it's making blaze powder from the blaze rods. Again, I always think it's funny that that goes to 66, and then you pull it out, and I always wanted to try this. If you shift click it, it does pull it out at 66. Okay, so we've broken Minecraft. We've broken the stack rules of Minecraft, guys, or survival Minecraft. Uh, over here, we have the recently constructed obsidian factory, which I haven't actually run that much, but I actually think it looks pretty cool. I do like the way that the lava and water look together, the contrasting colors. Uh, yeah, pretty simple. We have the lever right here to turn it on and off. Uh, over here, we have the compactor, which was way too expensive for what it actually does, but it allowed us to turn coal into diamonds. It does have other uses, but that's why we made this whole setup with a ton of gearboxes and a gas turbine. One of the very few times they actually used the gas turbine outside of the bedrock breaker. Um, yeah, but that was that was pretty fun to make. Over here, we just have a furnace with a gas collector and a gas duct. This is what I used to get the... Oh, gosh. I can't even think of it right now. Let me look in a reservoir. Are there any full reservoirs in here? No, we can't even see them. Oh, gosh. I can't even think of what the name of the gas is. I want to say it's hydrogen, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm bad with that. I can't even remember. I thought we, we heated up like the hydrogen, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, over here, we have the pulse jet furnace, which is what I used to make a lot of the blast glass that we got. This is initially what I had made the fractionation unit for because we needed to get the jet fuel to run this, not actually any of the engines. Uh, it does get really hot, so I was worried it was going to light the rest of the base on fire, but it actually never did that. Thank goodness for that. Now back here, we have the magnetizing unit which goes along with the AC engine. Uh, now this was used for what's over here. We can't really see it right now, but it was the uh, the spawner controller that we could set so that we could make it spawn faster or shut it off altogether. And I don't have the windows over here anymore, but this is the blaze farm. And if we come down here, we will see the item vacuum along with the mob killing setup that we have. So we have, oh gosh, I can't even remember what the name of that is. Uh, it's under farming. Yeah, so the mob harvester, that's what's creating that laser that you saw right there. Pretty much just kills the blaze when they get above it and then those drop down and get collected by the item vacuum which has a ton of xp and blaze rods in it that i never actually used um but it's a great setup and i want to say it's mumbo setup but i think someone told me that someone made that setup before mumbo did so yeah i don't know it's a great setup though it's pretty much just the one that uses pistons to push them down when they land on them but i think that's pretty much it for this floor we gotta head downstairs into the reactor craft floor Okay, so this was the first reactor craft setup that I ever made. It's the isotope centrifuge and uranium processor setup. Now this was pretty much used for getting enriched uranium and depleted uranium dust, which we then eventually used uh, on the second reactor that we'll talk about a little bit over there. But this was one of the first times I used the micro turbine um, and it was one of the few uses for the fluorite crystals and for some of the pitch blend that we have. Um, but yeah, this allowed us to produce a pretty good amount of uranium dust which we then put to use in the second reactor which like i said we'll talk about nothing special over here though um this is the turbine that we put the steam into for the reactor craft setup uh this was probably some of the most this was probably some of the most i don't even know entertaining stuff to set up in this mod um or i guess set of mods because it's not really reactor rotary craft it's reactor craft but it's awesome because right over here we have the oh can we see what's in that no we can't darn it Okay, well, we have the first reactor over here, which is the high temperature gas reactor, which pretty much uses the, oh, it's carbon dioxide. Why well, I think it was hydrogen. Okay, so carbon dioxide is the thing I was trying to think of upstairs, but we have uh, pretty much carbon dioxide exchanging heat, and then that exchanges heat over here with the steam boiler to heat up water, produce steam, and then it goes around into the turbine. Then it gets condensed back down and goes into the um, pressurizers and then it goes back to regular water from low pressure water, which is what's in here right now. And that's pretty much it for the for the turbine setup. And then both of these produce steam. This one is the fission reactor. And this one pretty much just uses fuel cores, which I took all the stuff out of, but uh, you have neutrons that are getting reflected by the reflectors. And they pretty much just cause a bunch of reactions to occur inside the fuel cores. And then those fuel cores heat up the steam boilers. And again, the same process where the steam goes over and then gets released out of the steam grate. And then it goes vertically until it hits the turbine and then moves horizontally. And then gets caught in this whole never-ending setup of low-pressure water to water to steam and back and forth. 
Uh, over here we have the graphene battery, which is from Electrocraft, which I used to kind of harness the turbine's power because I never used it for anything else. And then you could easily move it around the base. That's really the only time I used Electrocraft, but that's the main purpose it actually serves. Uh, and I think that's it for what we did. We can head back upstairs. Um, oh, you know what? There actually is some mining stuff downstairs. We have the sonic borer and the boring machine, but uh, and the bedrock breaker, but I actually moved a lot of those setups so they're not actually down there, unfortunately, to take a look at. Um, I want to say the boring machine is somewhere up here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, the boring machine's right there. Uh, the bedrock breaker and the sonic borer are still downstairs, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think those are functioning setups right now. So that's going to be it for the episode, guys. Like I said, please post in the comments what mod you'd like to see next, whether it's commenting, upvoting, replying, anything to let me know what you guys would like to see. I know a lot of people have already expressed interest in certain mods, like Mechanism is a huge one that everyone keeps asking me to do, but I always take into consideration all the comments on this video, and that's where I get majority of my influence from when I'm picking the mods. One other thing that I wanted to discuss uh, before I actually call it quits for the video is going to be the possibility of switching from doing two Surviving Wisp series to one more Let's Play-like series and then one Surviving Wisp series. So the main reason is because some people come to my channel and they just want the informative stuff and then they leave, they come for one video and they just want to learn how to set up a reactor, they want to learn how to power the extractor effectively, stuff like that. Um, and I'm perfectly fine and I enjoy making these short informative videos. But then a lot of people are you know, disappointed when it's a 15 minute video, they want longer ones with stories and me just rambling and talking um, because they like watching my videos, which I really do I appreciate. I never thought people would like doing that, but I might start doing more of a let's play mod pack series where I just, you know, kind of hop on, we do whatever, it's informative, but it's not solely based around, you know, covering the information as quickly as possible, and that's that. So, uh, feel free to let me know how you guys think about that, um, and that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a like, and I will talk to you guys later.